I get so many questions about how I go about ballasting a turnout or a, or a point. Um, you can't use a ballast spreader as you would do for a normal straight piece of track or a, or a main line. You've got to go with a slightly different approach here. You've got to keep glue and ballast away from the mechanism because if that gets clogged up, you're never going to be able to operate the point um, either manually or using the, the point motors that I do. So what I do is I use PVA and the areas around about the mechanism and the switch blades, I put glue, neat PVA in between the sleepers like so. Okay, that's probably enough glue. As you can see, I've gone you know, two or three sleepers each side of the, the mechanism there. Now, I then take my, my ballast. In this case, I'm using the, the medium ballast from Woodland Scenics, and it's in a grey blend. So I just take it on a, a teaspoon and carefully present it to the, the glue, avoiding that mechanism. Don't worry if you go too generous, you can spread it out, okay? A little bit of going a bit too generous there. And the same at the sides. Cover the, the side sleepers. Now you'll notice I'm not putting any glue around about these areas as well, because that'll affect when the point moves out. You don't want ballast right in there. Not if you want an operating point anyway. I put a bit down here as well, just below the line of the, the cork. Now, just using your finger, tamp it down and spread it along, away from the mechanism. So in that direction and this direction, okay? Work it away from it. When I'm doing a point, um, I don't, for example, if there's ballast in this area here, I would stop short here with the ballast and leave this blank so any excess that I have running off the, the turnout has got somewhere to go. And then I could always touch up any bald areas later on that I've not covered with the, the ballast. Yeah, we have a bit more ballast on the side there actually. Take my edge of the finger, like so. Get off the top of the sleepers and it then creates the ballast shoulder. But don't worry about it not being neat just now, we've got a long way to go. Now we're going to use my teaspoon just to put the ballast in the rest of the turnout. Don't need to glue these bits down just now, they're far enough away from the mechanism so you can saturate that with the glue later, with the PVA water mix. Get any excess that you do have, you you know, you can push out to the tracks at the site, so don't panic if you go over the, over the score here. Well, again on the side, trying to get that shoulder, cover the, the sleepers. You can always add more, but it's quite difficult to get rid of the excess um, in certain areas, so just, you get used to it, to know what you need to put down and what you don't.
I think I'm fairly happy with that just now. Now what I do is I take a, a stubbed brush, I just cut the bristles shorter on this one, and tamp it into the, the sleepers in the middle. And again, I kind of brush it along as I go. And you can see push the excess off to the right hand side here. It'll always come in useful for the tracks. You can see here I need a bit more ballast to cover the side of the cork, it's not a problem. Now once you've got it roughly looking okay with the, the shoulder along the side here, remember high speed main lines will have a shoulder, a drop off if you like, um, to support the track, obviously for the higher speed um, action of the trains and stuff. Take the, I just take the handle of this, this plastic handle of a, a paintbrush and I just tap the top of the rails and it tamps the, and cause the vibration which moves the, the loose ballast that's on top of the rails into position. a couple of pieces with your um, small screwdriver for example that gets into the frog here you don't want it in there or all these these guides there as well so get that out of there and you could do a bit of tapping again now if you've got a stubborn piece of bars that doesn't want to go away um, what I do is I don't know how hygienic this is just wet the end of my finger and pick it off and stick that back in the tub there we go. Just tamp the rest into position so it's all behaving itself. Done. Now obviously you'll blend this part of the track in with the, the turnout and continue along to the left and to the right. But that is your ballasting uh, Pico turnout with Woodland Scenics medium grade ballast. The next stage obviously is to fix it down with glue. Fixing the ballast down around the, the track and the turnout is a straightforward process, but you've got to be careful um, that you you know you take your time and you don't make a, a hurried um, job of it. I just use a spray bottle full of water to first dampen the um, the ballast. Don't go too close in or you'll blow the ballast away. I'm going for about maybe 12 inches away there, and I'm just going to give the ballast a good drench. It'll change colour, it'll go more of a, a darker colour if it's grey. I'm going to do the whole lot while I'm at it. Right, that's probably enough for the turnout area. Okay, uh, just give it a, a few seconds just to um, work its way into the ballast. What you're really doing there is you're just trying to, one, it helps um, fix it in place when you put the glue on and two, you're breaking the surface tension down with the water and the PVA water mix with a touch of fairy liquid in it or washing up liquid. That just breaks the surface tension down and allows the, the glue to flow. Okay, I'll start to, to um, wet this area here. Now, around about the, the tie bar, you don't want to get glue. Okay, so I'll start at this end and I'll show you how I go around about it. Remember in the previous clip I had glued or put PVA down before I put the ballast on. That secured the, the base layer of the ballast. The top layer might be a bit loose. So what I'm just going to do is take my um, PVA water mix. Very carefully just drip into the sleepers near the, 
the mechanism, especially this one and this one. You don't want it flowing into the, the mechanism area. Okay, this, this area has already been ballasted and, and um, glued. Same with around the edges, just be very careful when you're doing this. Now I've also got a pile of ballast here, because that's where the, the dummy point motor will sit. And that has to get a good saturation. Try not to touch the ballast with your nozzle of your squeegee bottle here. The bottle that I'm using is a Deluxe Materials. You get them in a pack, I think. And it's ideal. I decant um, the glue from th the tub via a syringe into this. And it comes out nice and gentle. You've got more control than a, using a syringe. Syringe can tend to um, be inconsistent. If you accidentally press it too hard, it goes everywhere. But this uh, bottle is, I find more controllable. So now that I've got away from the, the mechanism area, I can be a bit more liberal with my application of the glue. You have to saturate the ballast. Okay, the first layer will soak in and almost disappear. If it's wet, it'll flow. If it's not, it'll just um, sit on top of the ballast. Okay, that's why you really have to give it a good soak. So I'm going to go over the areas again and again. You can see the first application is soaking in. Now, if somebody says saturate, you're going to saturate until it's not running away very quickly at all. Don't worry if it's sitting um, on and puddling a little bit on the top. It will work its way in. Obviously, you don't want to have it flooded, okay? That would just be silly. Down the central area of the track. And I'm going to keep doing the, the ballast um, fixing down around this area and then I'll leave it to dry. Now, how long do you need it to dry? This is the the common question I get asked, well, if I did this in summer, it'd be 24, 24 to 36 hours. I'm doing it in winter. The temperature around about night time here at the moment is about 10 degrees at the loft. So it's going to take two to three, maybe four days just to finally go off. Don't come up and prod it and, oh no, it's not, it's not fixing. Just let the glue set, okay? Give it as long as it needs until you can come up and you can't even dig your nail into the ballast. It's that hard. Once you've ballasted a turnout, um, doing normal track is, is pretty easy. I've got a green scene ballast spreader here and I've filled it with the Woodland Scenics grey blend. And all you do is you push it along the track slowly but steadily and it will release the, the ballast from the bottom. And one hole goes in the middle of the tracks and the other two to create the shoulders at the side. There we go. Now at the moment it looks quite... Um, you know, messy and, and covered. And if I zoom in a little bit, you see that the rail tops are, are covered. That's um, simple to rectify. You can either take your finger and just spread it along. And then what I do is I take my um, brush again that had the bristles shortened and I just tamp it into place. Again, moving the excess along so you see more of the, the sleepers. Don't want to take too much off though. Again, depends what era that you're modelling. If you're modelling more recent model um, modern image, you're going to be, you know, the bass is, is near the top of the sleepers. If you're ballast in a yard or something else, yeah, there might be less ballast there. So there we go, we've got that done. 
Now what I do is I just take the corner of my finger on the sides and the outer sleepers and I clean some of the excess off there. Do the same on the other side. Okay, so now you can see more of the sleepers. And then take the, the paintbrush handle again. And then any stubborn bits of ballast that are, haven't been tamped in between the sleepers, you can just tidy up. And there you go. Simple as that. That's been three days now since I applied the PVA glue mix and the ballast is pretty much sawed now, okay? Um, that's even up here in the loft which sits at about maybe 10 to 12 degrees at this time of year. So I'm quite happy with the drying rate there. If you want to run trains on it now, obviously you can. And um, what I would say is just clean the top of the rail heads with a track rubber to get any of the, the glue residue from the rail heads so obviously the train will run um, better. You might want to now um, add to any weathering techniques to your track. Certainly I'll be putting um, some sleeper grime, roof dirt and oil spillings down on the track as I usually do um, through my airbrush. Um, I've done a video on that previously and the link to that will be at the end of the video. If you have any questions what you see in this video, please do get in touch. Um, in the meantime, happy modelling.